about this beautiful original painting from Chagall, May Day Before the Window, uh, one of the superstars of this current exhibition. Uh, so lovely to have an original painting in the gallery. Um, given that paintings from Chagall can realize upwards of almost $15 million, and they're getting so hard to procure, what, we, what we're doing here at Gallery Michael is we're going after the finest works that we can to offer, offer our clientele. Uh, one of my favorite quotes that Chagall ever made was that our inner world is reality, perhaps even more so than the, what he called the apparent world. And it really speaks to the artist that was born at a time and in a place that is fascinating to me. Uh, 1887, Viteps, Russia, was about as black and a white of a world as one could imagine. He, he, uh, he came, came from a very poor part of Viteps. Uh, color imagery was not something that most people had even seen. Um, not like today where we're inundated with uh, all sorts of imagery. It was a very, very different world. Uh, Chagall's story is fascinating. He gets a lot of inspiration from his uncle Noosh. Most of us are familiar with the, the fiddler on the roof, the character with the violin. We hear that the Chagall family would have the uncle Noosh read excerpts from the Bible. And Chagall said in his autobiography that he used to close his eyes and drift off into another world, this inner world that he refers to. And it was a world filled with color. It was a world filled with animals that were part of the Chagall life. And animals and humans existed on an equal plane. And I think that's one of the things that throughout his life's body of work appeals to so many people. So Chagall is uh, the first of nine children. They, we read that his mother has a special place in his heart for Chagall, in her heart for Chagall, just because he was the first of nine. There were seven sisters, two, two brothers. And the mother did all that she could to encourage his drawing. He, uh, early on in his life, we see and read that he was very, very apt at uh, drawing and doodling around, and he was encouraged. So much so that um, when he was uh, 21 years of age, by miracle, his mother was able to literally make a few bribes and have him go study art in St. Petersburg, where he thrived. He would return a, um, in uh, the next year and full of confidence, and that would be a very, very important um, point in his life because that's when he, he and Bella first met. Love at first sight is something I read about when I read about Chagall and Bella. They just absolutely fell madly in love with each other. As I mentioned earlier, she's from the rich part of town, and Chagall, he's from the poor side of town. Bella was a little devious. She said to Mark, all you have to do is go to my father's home and ask for his blessing of our union, and it will be so. Chagall is so naive and so in love, he believes this. She doesn't, but he does. That's the important key. So when Chagall will go to the home of Papa Rosenthal, and he pronounces that he is here to ask for the permission to make Bella his fiance, to become one, the, the older man looks at him and he says, I know who you are. What possibly do you have to offer me? You have no dowry. Chagall looked him in the eye and he said, shame on you. I don't have anything to offer your, your daughter, Bella. He grabbed his hand and he put the hand on his own chest and he looked the man in the eye and he said, if you can feel the beat of my heart, Mr. Rosenthal, no man's heart will beat like this for the love of your daughter. And no father should ever ask for more than that. Quite a powerful moment, as you can only imagine. And apparently days later, Rosenthal will ask for his daughter to join him. He was so taken, he blessed the union. You can only imagine the joy that um, Bella has on hearing the news that her father is accepting of this poor artist. And as a symbology for this union, we read that Bella will run into the fields of Viteps. She gathers a huge bouquet of flowers. She broaches Chagall with the wonderful news. And she says, my father has granted his blessing for us to be together. And I think this is so important for us to have these flowers because like life, flowers are beautiful, but they cycle. They only live and thrive and are beautiful for a given moment in time. So we shall always have flowers in our life. Anybody who knows Chagall's work knows that the flowers are so terribly important to him. And 
We often talk about Chagall as being one of the most autobiographical of the modern masters. And in this beautiful composition, we see the central characters are Chagall and Bella, and they are surrounded with beauty. I would have to believe, because of the window reference and the moon in this particular composition, we're looking at a time in the artist's memories, because this was painted after Bella had passed, when they were living in the Beehive area in Paris, where they could actually see uh, the Eiffel Tower in the, in, in the background, the City of Lights. Just an incredible time in their life and an incredible memory that Chagall would carry all the way through to 1985 when he would pass. At the, in his 98th year, he was 97, but a century was, uh, was of, of life and of art was practically created by Chagall. Um, this is just a masterpiece. It's a wonderful example of, um, of his painting. It's a mixed media work. We have oil, we have gouache, we have acrylic. And um, it's, it's a thrill to have in the gallery. It's, uh, any museum in the world would, world would covet such a wonderful work of art. So it's, uh, it's one of the high points in this current exhibition. Thank you.